Opening draw at the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. A wild card team skipped by Chelsea Carey facing Krista McCarvel in Northern Ontario. And this is pretty awesome. The Scotties in Thunder Bay, the home of Team McCarvel. St. Patrick, a local high school, created the huge logo on their field in support for the event. No fans in the building through round robin play of this year's Scotties. Third end, Carey down one zip. Carey with hammer, trying for the blank. And an early mistake from the two-time Scotty's champ as her rock flashes. It's a steal of one. It's 2-0 Northern Ontario. Fourth end, skip stones. McCarvel's first without hammer. Facing one. And this is a really nice shot. Picks away the yellow. And Northern Ontario is sitting a couple. So now to carry with hammer. Facing three. McCarvel rocks. Needs to nearly bite the forefoot for a single point. This one comes in and goes too far. It ends up being a steal of three. It's five zip, Northern Ontario. Fifth end, Northern Ontario in some trouble, facing two. McCarvel's last without hammer. And this is a great scrub, and that rock gets there for second stone. They limited the damage to two in the end. It's five two. Six end we go. McCarvel with hammer, needs full forefoot for a single. And how nice is this? Just a beauty to the button. Northern Ontario gets a single point. They go on top, 6-2. Eighth end, same score. Carey needs a double takeout to score one. And this is a tough shot. Gets one McCarvel rock to go, but that back red holds on for shot rock. It ends up being a steal of one, and the hometown rank team McCarvel would open up the Scotties with a win. 7-3, the final. Draw two at the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Carrie Anderson's rink beginning their quest for a third straight national title, taking on Team Ontario, skipped by Holly Duncan. First end, Ontario has hammer. Facing one, Duncan with a chance to score three early. Wipes out her own stone at the back in the process, but still, Ontario gets the deuce. They jump out to a quick 2-0 lead. They kept applying the pressure in the second. Anderson's last with hammer, facing four, makes the double, Wipes out both red stones. Anderson avoids falling behind in a big hole. She's down 2-1 after two. Then after a steal of one tied it up, Duncan now facing some pressure in the fourth end. Facing four, and Duncan comes up way too light. Only gets it to the top of the eight foot. That's a steal of three for Canada. They take a 5-2 lead. Sixth end, Canada now up just one, but an opportunity for big damage, sitting three. Anderson's last with hammer. Trying to tap that redstone back and score a four, and she makes it. Great shot by the two-time defending champion. It's 9-4 Canada. After a single, made it 9-5. Anderson's last with hammer in the eighth end. A chance to put up another big score. Wipes out that one redstone and scores three. Anderson's ring kicks off their title defense with a commanding 12-5 win. Draw three at the Scotties. Team Flurry being skipped by Selena Negevan. As Skip Tracy remains out after testing positive with COVID, facing Penny Barker and Saskatchewan. It's still uncertain when the skipper will be able to return for Team Flurry. After Negevan missed and gave up a steal of one in the first, second end. A chance for a pair, a hit and stick around. Nicely done there. And the wild card rink picks up a couple of points. They go on top, 2-1. Fourth end, Saskatchewan back on top, 3-2. Barker's first without hammer, makes the freeze. Saskatchewan is sitting three. They went on to steal one in the end. They would lead 5-2 at the break. Saskatchewan coach Mark Lang in quarantine and isn't currently with the team in Thunder Bay after testing positive with COVID, still giving the team tips at the halfway mark as they look to win their tournament opener. The wild card rink, a chance for a couple back in the six. A huge piece of the eight foot would do. Negavans rock. Comes in heavy, can maybe rub off the yellow rock, but that goes by. They settle for a single, and that face says it all on how this game is going for Team Flurry. It's 5-3. To the seventh end, Negavans last without hammer. Already sitting two, makes a good one. Taps their own back, grabbing the bun, and wild card is line three. They would go on to steal a pair, and it's tied at five. Eighth end after a miss by Negavan. Barker, an opportunity to draw for two and retake the lead. Draws it right down to their own. That's perfect. Saskatchewan takes a 7-5 lead with a couple ends to go. 
Back and forth we go. Ninth end, Negavan. A hit and stick for three, and to take the lead coming home, makes it. And Team Flurry, skipped by Negavan, is on top, 8-7. Final end, Negavin's last without hammer. Looking to really put the pressure on. And how good is this draw? Right to the button, and they are putting big time pressure on Saskatchewan. So now Barker needs to move some granite around and score. Cannot do it. And Team Flurry, skipped by Negavan, comes back and wins it. 9 7, the final. Draw four at the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Team Alberta skipped by Laura Walker, taking on Marianne Arsenault's British Columbia ring. After a blank in the first end, Walker's last with Hammer, facing two, and looking at a crowded house, chips one redstone out the back and pushes the other far enough to score the single. Great shot by Walker, Alberta up one zip. After BC tied it up with a single, Walker again with Hammer in the fourth, facing one but has a chance to score three, gets it by a couple guards, picks out that red stone for a three spot, it's 4-1 Alberta. Next end, Walker's first without Hammer, looking to do some damage control with BC sitting three, but she comes up light, doesn't even get it to the eight foot, and that would be costly. Now Arsenault's last with Hammer, looking at an open draw to score the triple, and she makes it. BC with a three spot of their own, and that ties it up at the break. Sixth then, Walker's first with Hammer, facing two, pushes out one of the reds, then just gets the other to slide far enough out of the rings. Great double by Walker, and that would pay off later. Walker now with her last, looks like an open hit to score the single, but the yellow at the back might just be biting, and that's exactly how she plays it. They would go for a measurement, and indeed, the yellow is hanging on, and it's second shot stone. Alberta with the deuce and a 6-4 lead. In the seventh, Walker's last without hammer. Alberta has shot stone, but Walker overcooks it. That led to another three spot for BC. They capitalize and take the lead on the miscue. Next end, Walker with a chance to bounce back. Her last with hammer facing one, picks out the red stone, gets the yellow to stick around. That's a deuce for Alberta. They're back on top 8-7 to the ninth. Arsenault's last with Hammer, facing one but could put up a big score, moves that shot stone out of the way but only gets the single, could have been three, that ties it up at eight. So in the tenth end, Walker's last with Hammer, facing two, looking for the hit and stick at the top edge of the forefoot and she makes no mistake. Alberta takes it nine to eight, they pick up their first win and move to one and one. Draw five at the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Emma Miskew and Team Wildcard taking on Krista McCarvel's Northern Ontario ring. Second end, Northern Ontario already up to nothing. And check this out, Sarah Wilkes sweeping along and tumbles over one of her own stones. Wilkes playing third at the Scotties this year, goes down hard there, but the good news is she'd be okay. So still in the second, Miskew's last with hammer. Northern Ontario has shot stone, needs a piece of the pin to score the single, and Miskew with perfect draw weight. That makes it two to one. Next end, McCarvel's last with Hammer, facing two. Looks like she's set to settle for the single, but the shooter spills too far. A stolen point for Team Wildcard ties it up. In the fourth, McCarvel facing some more pressure. Team Wildcard sitting four, McCarvel's last with Hammer, only wipes out one Yellowstone, so that's a steal of three. It's 5-2 Team Wildcard. Very next end, McCarvel with a chance to put up a deuce, her last with Hammer, sitting one, looking at the hit to score two, but misses everything. Northern Ontario just gets the one, it's 5-3 at the break. Sixth end, missed you now with Hammer, sitting one, needs a piece of the forefoot to put up another two spot, and she makes it. Team Wildcard goes on to take it eight to five, they improve to two and one. Draw six at the Scotties. Two-time defending champion Carrie Anderson and Team Canada facing Laurie St. George and Quebec. Every year, TSN does team power poses. This year, they didn't for safety reasons, but that didn't stop the St. George rink from taking part as they do their own in the parking lot. Prior to the event, they are currently 2-0 at the Scotties. First and third stones, Team Canada's Val Sweeting, and this is a great brush by the front end. They take it down into the eight foot, and Canada putting the pressure on early. Still in the first, 
St. George with hammer and a very difficult shot. Can't get the rock through the port. It's a steal of a couple and 10 of the 20 points Canada has scored this week have been stolen so far. Next end, St. George first with hammer facing two around the button. Makes the run back, opens it up and helps set up Quebec to a single and they trail 2-1. Let's move ahead to the six end, 4-2 Team Canada and more from Sweden. And this is a beauty draw. It comes right down to their own on the button. It helps set up a deuce and they go on top, 6-2. Next end we go, St. George attempting the split on the guard above the rings and score two points and get back in it. Emily, Riley, staying with it. Now touch it. Oh, did oh, you get it? Oh, it looks like she may have. St. George reaction says it all as that rock just grabs the 12 foot for two. It is 6-4. Eighth then we go, Anderson and Team Canada, a chance at a couple back. A draw to the button for the skipper, and that is so good. They score a pair and go on top 8-4. They would go on to win the game. Anderson and Team Canada improved to 3-0 at the Scotties. Draw seven at the Scotty's Tournament of Hearts. A couple wildcard teams facing off. Emma Miskew and Selena Negevin throwing skip stones. Opening end, Miskew with a chance to do some damage. Her last with hammer. Facing one but looking at a hit to score four. Miskew gets it by that high guard, makes the hit and pushes the redstone out the back. Team Holman up four nothing early. But very next end, Negevin with a chance to answer back. Her last with hammer, looking at a hit to score three and she makes it. Seven points in the first two ends combined. Team Holman up 4-3. Right and after a blank and three, Skip Stone's now in the fourth end. Negevin's last without hammer, runs her own stone back, rolls it under cover, and gets the shooter to hang around up top. Great shot by Negevin. That led to a steal of one, and they'd steal another point in the fifth. So now 5-4 Team Flurry in the sixth end. Miskew's last with hammer. Sitting two, Miskew, again showing off the draw weight, maneuvers it in there to score three. Terrific shot, gives them a 7-5 lead. Seventh end, Team Flurry applying the pressure, sitting four, Miskew's last without hammer, and can only make one redstone go away, and that leaves the door wide open. Negvin now her last with hammer, just needs a piece of the rings, and she does just that. A five-ender for Team Flurry. They go on to win it 11-9, and they improve to 3-1. Draw eight at the Scotties, Carrie Anderson and Team Canada, who are a perfect 3-0, taking on 2-1 Alberta, skipped by Laura Walker. To the third, Canada up 2-1, third stones. Canada's Val Sweeting, her first. And this is a great shot. Gets the yellow granite moving around the forefoot and ends up Team Canada sitting one. Now let's go to Sweeting's last shot of the end. Going with the draw and the front end able to drag it to the forefoot. A great brush. Anderson would miss a draw for three, but a couple Sweeting great shots help lead to a pair. It's 4-1 for the Anderson rank. Next end and more from Sweeting, her last to the end and makes a great double takeout and another good one from Sweeting. Now to skip stones, Walker facing four with hammer and a big miss, makes the hit but the shooter rolls out, it's a huge steal of three, it's all Canada, they lead 7-1. To the seventh end, now a 7-4 game. Anderson with hammer and a chance for a big score, as many as four, facing one. Makes the takeout, does knock out one of their own, but they get three, and Team Canada would go on to win it 10-5. They improve to 4-0 at the Scotties. Then later in draw eight, Ontario skipped by Holly Duncan, taking on Mackenzie Zacharias and her 2-0 Manitoba rink. Seventh end, it is 6-3 Manitoba leading. Skip Stones after Duncan made a great shot to sit three red. Zacharias last without hammer and eyeing the double to limit the damage. Zacharias makes it Ontario only scoring two in that end. We needed an extra end in this one. It is tied at seven. Manitoba and Zacharias with hammer facing two, needing the hit and stick. And Zacharias converts, Manitoba improving to 3-0 and at the Scotties, 8-7. Scotties Tournament of Hearts, draw 9, 4-0, Andrea Crawford and New Brunswick taking on 2-1 and one Saskatchewan, skipped by Penny Barker. First end after Barker came up late to lie a couple, 
Crawford has a hit and stick opportunity for the pair with Hammer, and Crawford converts. That opens the scoring. It's two zip. Third end, same score. Barker with Hammer, her first. And this is great touch right down to the button. And that is what Saskatchewan scored in the end. They trail 2-1. Next end, third stones, Saskatchewan's Christy Gamble. Facing four, New Brunswick Rocks makes the hit and roll. She made another one on her last. It helps steal a point, and it's tied at two. Six end, Saskatchewan down 3-2. Facing four on her first with Hammer. And Barker gets the team out of some trouble with a great triple takeout. Saskatchewan would get a point. It's tied at three. Seventh end, Crawford and New Brunswick, a chance for a couple and to retake the lead. A hit and stick opportunity, and Crawford makes it. New Brunswick trying to stay perfect, leads 5-3. Next end, Crawford's last without hammer, facing two. I'm the double to take the end away. Calling the line, forward got it. Oh, and watch where this will go, watch where this goes. A little bit more, a little more. Oh, what a wonderful shot. What a beauty, Barker would miss on her blank attempt and Saskatchewan would settle for one. It's 5-4, New Brunswick. To the ninth, Crawford back with Hammer, facing one. Maybe to try to pick Shot Stone out and score a single, but this will work as well. It removes everything, results in a blank. New Brunswick with Hammer in 10, up by one. Final end, Crawford needs full forefoot for the win and to move New Brunswick to 5-0. and oh. All on its own. Yeah, finish it, finish it. Oh, yeah. All on its own for the win. <laughs> Wonderful shot, Andrea Crawford. New Brunswick wins it. They take it over Saskatchewan, 6-4, the final. Draw 10 at the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Joanne Rizzo throwing skip stones for Kerry Galusha's Northwest Territories rink, taking on Mackenzie Zacharias and Team Manitoba. First end, Rizzo's last with Hammer, looking at an open hit to score the deuce, and Rizzo does just that, the territory's up 2 nothing. Next end, Zacharias with Hammer, looking to do some damage control, facing three, runs her own stone back, but only one red stone goes away. That's a steal of two, Manitoba down 4 nothing in a hurry. So Zacharias keeps Hammer for the third, her first stone facing four, and Zacharias misses everything, goes right through the rings, They'd be forced to a single, Team Galusha up 4-1. After a stolen point made it 4-2, Rizzo with Hammer in the fifth end, facing one, angles her own stone back, pushes the yellow out to score the deuce. Terrific shot makes it 6-2. Sixth end now, Zacharias with Hammer, facing one, looking at a tough path to the rings and crashes into the guard. A steal of one makes it 7-2 for the territories. In the seventh, Zacharias again with Hammer, has a chance to get right back in it, and indeed makes the hit to score three. Manitoba clawing back, they're down 7-5. After a single in the eighth made it 8-5, Zacharias now with Hammer in the ninth end, facing two, makes the hit, but can't roll over and push the other red out, so it's just the single for Manitoba. Galusha's ring takes it 8-6, they're now 3-1. Draw number 11 at the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Two wildcard teams facing off, Chelsea Carey and Selena Negevin throwing skip stones. Both sides traded deuces in the first two ends. Carey's last with Hammer in the third, looking to just wipe out that yellow stone and get the blank. But the shooter hangs around, Carey with a mistake, and they take a 3-2 lead. So in the next end, Negevin's last with Hammer, facing one, looking at a hit to score a couple, and she gets it, a deuce for Team Flurry. they're up 4-3. Sixth end, Negevin's first without Hammer, runs her own stone back, wipes out that red stone to sit four, and that would force Carey to a single, so we're all tied up at four. After two straight blanks, still tied in the ninth end, Carey's last without Hammer, gets it by the guard, makes the hit, but the shooter spills out. Tough break for Carey, and that gives Negevin a chance to score the deuce. Just needs a piece of the eight foot, and she gets it to sit down. Team Flurry gets the deuce. They'd steal three in the final end and take it nine to four, and they improve to four and one. A wow to a woe. Draw 12 at the Scotties. Manitoba skipped by Mackenzie Zacharias, facing Nova Scotia and Christina Black. 
second end. Manitoba down 2 0 and in some trouble. Zacharias facing two with Hammer, trying the run back, but runs the Rays Rock right by. It's a steal of two for Nova Scotia, and they lead 4 0. On we go to the third. Manitoba under pressure again. Zacharias facing three with Hammer. Needs a big time draw for one. Get off that stone. You need the rub? No, we're fine. Well, here they go. She's through. <laughs> oh, terrific stuff. Wonderful draw. Mackenzie Zacharias. Just an outstanding draw by the youngest skip at the Scotties, 22 years old, and Manitoba is on the board. Fourth and third stones, Nova Scotia's Jennifer Baxter, a lonely red on the side of the button, trying the double raise, and that is a great shot. It ends up Nova Scotia sitting a couple, looking to add to their lead. So now to black with hammer, a chance for multiple points, facing the one red in the forefoot. Starting to go, starting to go, Shelly Barker starting to go. Coming through, pick it away and push it back, and there's your deuce. Nova Scotia adds a couple more, and they lead 6-1. Fifth and second stones, Mackenzie's sister, Emily, going with the very long run back. And how pretty is that shot? Just a beauty there. Manitoba got a single in the end, and they trail 6-2 at the break. Six end, Manitoba facing two. Zacharias is first without hammer, and another great one. Makes the double raise in the Manitoba Rock. Sit shot rock, they stole a point in the end, and at 6-3. Seventh end, after Zacharias' last without hammer came deep. Black facing three, and a great brush there. Makes the hit and rolls in for shot stone. Nova Scotia goes on top, 7-3. Eighth end, Manitoba not going away after a great draw on her first with hammer. Zacharias, a draw chance to cut the lead to a pair, and that is money, a great draw. Manitoba clawing back, it is 7-5. After a blank in nine, Nova Scotia with hammer in 10. Black facing two with her last, going with the draw. Just needs to be closer than the red in the 12 foot, and that is nicely done as Nova Scotia takes it 7-6 the final. Both teams are now three and two. Draw 13 at the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Andrea Crawford and Team New Brunswick looking to stay undefeated, taking on Kristen McCarville's Northern Ontario rink. Third end tied at one, McCarville looking to do some damage control, facing three, her last without hammer, pushes away the shot stone and rolls it over. Nice shot by McCarville, that forces New Brunswick to just a single. Next end, New Brunswick with second and third shot stones, Crawford's last without hammer, Angles it back, but loses one of her own. Doesn't get shot stone. That led to a deuce for McCarville. Northern Ontario up 3-2. In the fifth, New Brunswick with shot stone and undercover. McCarville's last without hammer. Excellent draw weight. Gets full four foot for shot stone. And that led to a steal of one. So it's 4-2 Northern Ontario in the sixth end. Crawford's first with hammer. Facing a couple. Runs it back. Makes three red stones disappear. Excellent shot by the New Brunswick skip. So after McCarville put her last at the top edge of the eight foot, Crawford now with her last, makes the double, both red stones go away and gets the shooter to hang around. A deuce for NB ties it at four. Next end, Northern Ontario sitting two, Crawford's first without hammer, looking to wipe out both reds, but misses the double. That leaves the door wide open. McCarville now her last with hammer, facing one, looking for the hit to score the deuce, and she makes it. Northern Ontario takes a 6-4 lead. So 10th end, Team McCarville now up 7-5. Crawford, her last with hammer, needs a deuce to force an extra end, rubs the red stone, the shooter starts to spill away, but sits down just in time. New Brunswick gets the deuce they needed, we're off to an extra end. So in the 11th, skip stones, McCarville's first, Northern Ontario already sitting two, Shows off the excellent draw weight, gets it right to the hearts to sit three. So now one final chance for Crawford. Her last needs to be shot stone. Gets all three reds moving, but still not good enough for shot stone. New Brunswick suffers their first loss, but remain a top pool A. Northern Ontario moves to four and two with an eight-seven win.
It's a Pool B showdown in draw 14 at the Scotties. 4-1 Kerry Galusha in the Northwest Territories, taking on 6-0 Team Canada and Kerry Anderson. Galusha on a career-high four-game win streak in the Scotties. Second end down 2-0. Joanne Rizzo throwing four stones for them. Makes a great run back. It helps set up a single in the end, and they trail 2-1. Next end, Anderson's first with Hammer. And this is a great shot by the back-to-back -back Scotty's champion. Makes the raise takeout, and look at the roll. Pretty nice, helps set up a pair. It's 4-1, Team Canada. On to the fourth, Northwest Territories facing three. Rizzo needs a big time draw for the single. A huge chunk of the button, and this is clutch. A great shot, and they get the single. It's now a 4-2 game. Six end, now 4-3. Third stones, Canada's Val Sweeting. Makes a really nice double takeout, and that Canada rock sitting buried. Sweeting curled a Scotty's career best game, a 98% in this one. Let's move now to Anderson's first with Hammer, trying the hit and stick on the red in the back forefoot. Here comes that guard. In fact, they got to sneak it by two. One, two, and got it. And Canada would end up scoring three in the end. It's the 10th end this tournament. Canada has scored three plus points. They lead by four. Move all the way ahead to the ninth. 7-5 Canada now. Anderson with hammer needs the four foot four one. Facing a couple, and there it is. She makes it. Canada would go on to win it. They clinch top spot in Pool B, and they remain perfect at 7-0 at the Scotties. Draw 15 at the Scotties and a pair of four and two teams. Saskatchewan and Penny Barker facing Krista McCarvel and Northern Ontario. McCarvel, a school teacher in Thunder Bay, on Wednesday, her class showing the love. Well, first end we go. McCarvel rink putting pressure on, sitting three. But Barker's first without hammer. Makes the beauty double takeout. She would make a hit and roll on her last, and Saskatchewan would get out of trouble. Northern Ontario ended up being forced to a single in the end. They lead 1-0. Move ahead to the fifth end. Now 2-0 Northern Ontario. After Barker sailed a draw through, McCarvel's last without hammer. And a nice draw here to the side of the forefoot. And Saskatchewan facing a couple. So now Barker looking to tap their own guard back, but the raised rock doesn't even get second stone. It's a steal of two, and Northern Ontario leads 4-0 at the break. Six and more pressure on Saskatchewan. Barker facing one, trying the hit and roll to avoid another steal. Cannot make it. It's a steal of one, and it is 5-0 Northern Ontario. Eighth end, same score. Saskatchewan trying to get something going their way. McCarvel's last without hammer, and McCarvel nicely picks away the red rock, and now Barker has a very tough shot for multiple points. So Barker trying the double and to score deuce, and Barker can't make it. Another steal for Northern Ontario. They lead 6-0. Next end, and nothing going right for Barker and Saskatchewan in this one. But a double opportunity here into score two. And how nice is that from Barker? She makes it. And that brings a smile to Barker's face after that beauty. But it is Northern Ontario in this one as they take it 6-2, the final. Draw 16 at the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Mackenzie Zacharias and her Manitoba rink taking on Laura Walker in Team Alberta. First end, Walker trying to limit the damage. Her last without hammer, facing three, rubs off the red to get second shot stone, but that leaves the door wide open for Manitoba. Zacharias now her last with hammer, looking for the hit to score four, gets it by the guard, and the former world junior champion gets it done. Manitoba off and running, they're up four zip. Fourth end, it's now 4-1. Zacharias, her last with hammer, facing a couple, but she wrecks on the guard. A steal of two and Alberta is back within one. Next end, Manitoba with hammer and a couple red stones in the house. Walker's last without hammer, but crashes into the guard. Another big opportunity for Manitoba. Zacharias now her last with hammer. Alberta hadn't given up a four-ender all tournament. Well, that's two in the first five ends. Manitoba goes on to win it 10 to seven. They improve to five and two. 
Draw 17 at the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Tracy Fleury back from COVID-19 protocols after missing her wildcard team's first seven games. Krista McCarvel and her Northern Ontario rink can book their spot in the playoffs with a win or potentially finish top spot in Group A. So how would Fleury fare in her return? After a blank in the first, Fleury's last with Hammer in the second end. Facing two, doesn't get rid of that shot stone. It's nearly a steal of two. But just the one, Northern Ontario up 1-0. Third end, second stones. Check out this shot from Ashley Sipola. Goes right through the tight port, wipes out that one red stone to sit three. Terrific shot by the Northern Ontario second. So Fleury again with hammer in the third. Her last facing two, and just barely gets it to the eight foot. Team Fleury forced to the single. It's all tied at one. But very next end, it's Fleury applying the pressure. McCarvel's last with hammer, facing three. But the two-time Scotty's medalist misses everything. Heavy on the draw for a steal of two. Costly mistake. Gives Team Wildcard a 3-1 lead. McCarvel with a chance to redeem herself in the fifth end. Her last with Hammer facing two. Pushes her own stone back. Gets a couple reds moving to score the single. Excellent shot cuts the Wildcard lead down to one. In the seventh, McCarvel with a chance at a deuce. Her last with Hammer. Sitting one makes the hit and gets the little roll she needs to score a pair. Nice shot by McCarvel, ties it at four. Eighth end, after McCarvel couldn't get the shooter to stick on her last, Fleury's last with hammer, just needs a piece of the rings to score two of her own, and she takes it right to the hearts. Both skips trading deuces, Team Wildcard up 6-4. Ninth end, Northern Ontario with the chance to respond. McCarvel's last with hammer, sitting one, but Wildcard has second and third shot stones, Brings it right to the edge of the forefoot for two. Back and forth they go, all tied at six. So 10th and final end. Northern Ontario put the pressure on with shot stone. Flurry's last with hammer. Gets both yellow stones moving. Scores the deuce. Team Flurry wins seven straight after dropping their opener. They finish a top group A with an 8-6 win. And so with that... They will pick up the win. Final round robin draw at the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Carrie Anderson and her perfect 7-0 Team Canada rink facing 5-2 Manitoba and Mackenzie Zacharias. Second end, no score. After Anderson made a great hit and roll, Zacharias is first with Hammer trying the raise takeout. Burgess, Sister Emily, here we go. Coming through, got it, run it back, touch it. Oh, and away it goes. What a beauty. What a pistol by the 22-year-old as Manitoba sitting three with hammer. After Anderson's draw came up well light, Zacharias has a hit and stick around for five points. And how about that? A huge score for Manitoba as they score five. And after two ends, it's five zip. On to the fourth end, now 5-1. Zacharias needs a big time draw for the single. And a big scrub here. They get it there, first shot rock. And Manitoba retakes the five point lead. Next end, after Zacharias missed on her last. Anderson with hammer and a double opportunity and score as many as five to tie it up. Sweeting calling line. Here we go. Got it, yes. sit down, nice one, Kurt. and it'll spin too far, four it will be. Team Canada scores four as the shooter rolls out, but at the break, they cut into the lead. It's 6-5, Manitoba to the seventh, now a 7-5 game. Third stones, Team Canada's Val Sweeting, and this is a great shot. Makes the hit, and look at that roll, sitting above the Manitoba rock. Team Canada got two in the end, nearly three after Anderson nearly made a tap but it's tied at seven with just a few ends to go. Ninth end, same score, Zacharias with hammer, facing two, and a big miss. And it ends up being a steal of two for Canada, and coming home, Team Canada has come all the way back to take the lead. It is 9-7. Final end, Zacharias with hammer, facing three, needs a triple, and the shooter to stay to tie it up. Only gets two of the Canada Rocks to go, and Team Canada skipped by Kerry Anderson go perfect in round robin play as they take it 10-7 the final. Manitoba will now play a tiebreaker Friday versus the Northwest Territories. It's tiebreaker time at the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Carrie Galusha making her 19th Hearts appearance, looking to lead the Northwest Territories to the playoffs for the first time since 1983, taking on Mackenzie Zacharias and Team Manitoba. Winner moves on to face New Brunswick in the playoffs. 
After a blank in the first, Skip Stones in the second end, Zacharias her last without hammer, sitting one, looking to make that yellow stone go away, but kills one of her own and loses the shooter, a costly mistake. So Joanne Rizzo, who throws Skip Stones for Team Galusha, her last with hammer, makes the hit to score three, great start for the territories, but check out the celebration. Galusha misses on the high five and nearly hits Margot Fleming in the face. Skip Stones in the third now. Zacharias, her first with hammer, facing three. Great shot by the 22-year-old, makes all three yellow stones go away for the triple, but Rizzo comes back with a terrific shot of her own. Makes the hit and rolls under cover. That forces Manitoba to just the single. Northwest Territories up 3-1 after three. Next end, Rizzo's first with hammer. Sitting one, but two other red stones in the house. And Rizzo makes the double. Zacharias would then miss a double. Team Galusha gets the deuce and they're up 5-1. Eighth end, Manitoba back within two. Rizzo's last with hammer, looking at a messy house. If the risk is that you're going to play it with quiet weight, you might just throw it away and say we're going to take our two and be four up playing nine. Here we go. Two possible, we'll get a possible three. Colton trying to hold it there. Bang, bang, up, coming back. Oh, wonderful shot for three. Wow. What a wonderful shot. Joanne Rizzo. What an incredible shot by Rizzo. The Northwest Territories are headed to the playoffs. They'll face Andrea Crawford in Team New Brunswick on Friday afternoon. That is some... It's the first playoff game at the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Krista McCarvel in Northern Ontario taking on Christina Black's ring from Nova Scotia. After a week where no fans were permitted due to COVID-19 restrictions, about 400 spectators are in the stands in Thunder Bay, made up of tournament volunteers and young curlers in the area. And check out the support from McCarvel's neighbors. They're ready to cheer on their home rink. Pick it up in the third end, all tied at one. Northern Ontario applying the pressure. Sitting three, Black's last without hammer. Crashes into the guard, so a chance for McCarvel to put up three or maybe even four. McCarvel's last with hammer now, makes the draw to the forefoot. They would need a measurement, but indeed it's a four-ender for Northern Ontario. They lead 5-1. Next end, Nova Scotia has hammer. Black with her first, facing two but has third shot stone. Runs it back, but drives her own stone out. Tough break for Black. After McCarvel put one in the rings to sit five, Black's last with hammer, trying to limit the damage, and Black comes up way too light. Can't get full eight foot. A steal of four for Northern Ontario. They are cruising with a 9-1 lead. In the fifth, Team McCarvel has shot stone. Black again with hammer. Her last facing one, and how about this? Makes the double to score four. Three straight four-enders, Nova Scotia down nine to five. McCarvel gets Hammer back for the sixth end. Her last facing a couple. He's full four foot to get the single, but she comes up light. A stolen point makes it nine six. After another steal in the seventh made it nine seven, McCarvel still with Hammer in the eighth. Black with her last. Gets it by the guard, makes the hit, and oh, rolls under did. cover. Oh, Excellent did. shot from Black now? to keep Roll the pressure off. So now McCarvel with her and last facing was... two, and her line is off. Sits down in time, oh, so it's just the steal of one. Now, Three straight stolen ends by Nova Scotia. Oh, They're back within seven. one. Okay. In the ninth, McCarvel with hammer for the fourth straight end. Already sitting one and looking at a hit to score the deuce, and the two-time Scotties medalist converts. No comeback for Nova Scotia. Northern Ontario wins it 11-8. They'll face Team Flurry on Saturday night. Scotty's Tournament of Hearts page playoff seeding game. Northern Ontario skipped by Krista McCarvel. Facing a wildcard team skipped by Tracy Flurry. Winner to the one versus two page playoff game. Second end, no score, third stones. Northern Ontario's Kendra Lilly makes the hit, nudges that other flurry rink stone back at Tad as well, and Northern Ontario looks to get out of trouble. Let's move to Lily's second rock of the end. And another dandy buyer taps their own rock back to the bun, and now Northern Ontario is sitting shot rock. To flurry with hammer, just her second game back after being in COVID-19 isolation after testing positive for the virus. 
trying to raise in the Northern Ontario Rock and move the granite around, and a miss here. It ends up being a steal of two after a measurement. It is 2-0 Northern Ontario. After a steal in the third, fourth end, Flurry still with hammer and a big opportunity for multiple points. Just tap the Northern Ontario Rock back that's in the forefoot and that crashes into the guard. Another steal of one and Northern Ontario leads it for Zep. Fifth end, skip stones, Northern Ontario sitting one. McCarville's first in the end. And how about this freeze? Just outstanding. It helped lead to another steal of two. And Northern Ontario, skipped by McCarville, would go on to win it. They advance to the page one versus two playoff game on Saturday night. Harry Anderson and Team Canada facing Andrea Crawford and New Brunswick. Six end tied up four. New Brunswick with hammer facing one. And Crawford taps her own guard up. It rubs off their own and curls in for Shot Rock. New Brunswick goes on top, 5-4. Next end, Crawford's first without hammer. Two reds right around the button. And what a clutch draw this is from Crawford as it sneaks in for Shot Rock. New Brunswick would steal a point in the end. They lead by a couple. Final end we go, New Brunswick up 7-6. Crawford with hammer and a chance to win it. Full eight is what they need to put themselves in their one, two page playoff, New Brunswick. Eight, six, the final for New Brunswick as they advance to the one versus two page playoff game on Saturday against Northern Ontario. It's the three, four page playoff at the Scott East Tournament of Hearts. Two time defending champ, Carrie Anderson and Team Canada taking on Tracy Fleury's wildcard rank. Third end, Canada up one, nothing. Anderson's last without hammer, facing a couple, and she comes up way too heavy, misses everything, and that leaves the door wide open for Team Wildcard. So Fleury now her last with hammer, just needs a piece of the forefoot, and she takes it right to the hearts. Team Wildcard with a three spot, they jump out in front three to one. Fourth end, Team Canada feeling the pressure again, facing three, Anderson's last with hammer, gets it by the yellow stones up top, makes the double, great shot to turn the end around. So after Fleury got shot stone with her last, Anderson now with a chance to put up a three spot of her own, makes the hit and does just that. The two-time defending champs take a 4-3 lead. Next end, Team Wildcard has hammer. Anderson with her last, facing one, maybe two. And Anderson with outstanding draw weight, gets a piece of the button, excellent shot. So now Fleury with her last, picks out that yellow stone. It would need a measurement, but indeed, that's a deuce for Fleury, her wildcard rink leads 5-4. So Canada gets hammer for the sixth end. They're sitting three. Fleury with her last. Can't get rid of any yellows. Kills one of her own in the process. And that would prove to be costly. Anderson now with her last. Looking at an open hit to score four. Makes the hit. Gets the shooter to sit down. A four-ender for Canada. They're out in front. 8-5. Next end. Canada with another great end sitting four. Flurry, her last with hammer, needs full forefoot to avoid giving up a steal, but Flurry heavy on the draw. Catches some backing, but it's still a steal of two. Canada up 10 6. In the eighth, Team Wildcard with a chance to pull back within three. Flurry's last with hammer, sitting one. Full forefoot would get her the deuce, but comes up light. Anderson bounces back after her only loss all week with an 11 6 win. She advances to Sunday's semifinal. One versus two page playoff game at the Scotties. Krista McCarville, the hometown favorite, and her Northern Ontario rink facing New Brunswick and Andrea Crawford. Fourth end, New Brunswick up 4-3. Third stones, Northern Ontario's Kendra Lillies. Last of the end. Run it back, just trying to move things around. Oh, what a wonderful shot. What a beauty by Lily. Northern Ontario is now sitting two. So now to Crawford's last without hammer, trying to come through the port and make the takeout, facing three Northern Ontario Stones. Calling the line, can you get through? Oh my gosh, you did! What a shot, and after a McCarville miss, that was the stolen point in the end. It's 5-3, New Brunswick. After a steal of one in five, six in, New Brunswick under some pressure. Crawford facing three with her first without hammer, makes the great double. She would make another on her last, and the end went on to blank, and it's 
Eighth and seven three game. McCarvel's first with Hammer trying to get back in it. How about this? Makes the double and now three Northern Ontario rocks in the rings. They ended up scoring three in the end and just like that, it's seven six. Next end, New Brunswick, a chance for a couple right back. Crawford, a draw to the forefoot and take a three point lead coming home. But that is light. New Brunswick has to settle for a single. It is 9-7. Tenth end, third stones. Look at that bunched up house. And more from Lily. That guard coming up, gotta get by that first. Oh yes, can you get by this one? Oh yes, can you get by that too? Oh yes, you can! What a great shot. So unfortunate it couldn't squeak in for third shot rock, but a beauty there. Northern Ontario would get two. We needed an extra end. So here we go in the 11th, third stones, New Brunswick sitting one, Sylvie Quillian trying to peel the guard and a huge miss. Runs it back in and knocks their own out. And now Northern Ontario is sitting two without hammer. After Crawford made a great one on her first, McCarvel's last without hammer looking for top four foot. Crowds in there too, boy. They, if they had a brush, they'd get it there. Here they go. Can you get it to the top four? To the top four. Yes, they do. What a brush that was. A little deeper than they wanted, but that is not too bad. So now Crawford can come off the red and knock the other red away for the win. Brilliant line. Is this the shot that will put them in? No, the side underneath. Northern Ontario will play in the final for the Scotties here at home in Thunder Bay. Northern Ontario comes back to win it. They are off to the final while New Brunswick meets Team Canada in the semi. Scotty's Tournament of Hearts semi-final. Carrie Anderson looking to move one step closer to a three-peat. Andrea Crawford trying to get New Brunswick back to the final for the first time since 1991. First end, Canada putting the pressure on early. Sitting three with Hammer, Crawford with her last, gets three Yellowstones moving, one of them goes away, third one sits down at the back. So Anderson now with her last, just needs a piece of the eight foot to get the deuce, and she takes it right to the hearts. Canada up to zip. Next end, Crawford her last with Hammer, looking at a possible double to score the deuce, but she drives it by. New Brunswick forced to the single, it's 2-1. In the third, Crawford her last without hammer, facing two, wipes out one yellow stone, then rolls the shooter over for shot stone. Incredible shot by Crawford. That forces Anderson to just the single. Crawford would be forced to a single in the fourth. So now in the fifth, Anderson looking at a blank, but makes the nose hit and the shooter hangs around. Just the single for Canada. They're up 4-2 at the break. Six then, Crawford facing some pressure. Her last with hammer, facing five. The skip out of Fredericton makes the hit to score the single. New Brunswick back within three. In the seventh, Anderson's last with Hammer, sitting one, looking to move that red and score the deuce. Taps her own back. It would need a measurement, and it's one yellow. Canada up 5-3. In the eighth, looks like New Brunswick might have something cooking. Sitting two along with fourth shot stone. Anderson's last without Hammer makes the double. Crawford forced to yet another single. Ninth end, New Brunswick has shot stone, but Anderson has a chance to hit and score three. She makes the hit, the shooter rolls out, but that's still a deuce for Canada. New Brunswick would concede. Their run at the Scotties is over. Anderson and Team Canada will face Krista McCarvel's Northern Ontario rink in pursuit of a third consecutive title. It's the final at the Scotties Tournament of Hearts. Hometown favorite, Northern Ontario, skipped by Krista McCarvel, facing Team Canada and Carrie Anderson. Team Anderson right looking to become the fourth team in history away. to win three facing straight Scotties. First Anderson. end, after a nice shot by McCarvel, Anderson needs a big time draw for a single, facing two. Needs that button. Oh, goodness, what a start. That is the draw of a two time 
defending champion. And what a beauty that was. Canada opens the scoring. It's one nothing. Second and third stones. Canada's Val Sweeting. And this is a wonderful curling shot. Makes the short raise. And look at this roll for the shooter. Gets in for second shot. So Canada sitting one and two. They ended up forcing Northern Ontario to a single in the end. Third end, Anderson's first with Hammer. Facing one, partially behind cover. Anderson makes the hit, the shooter sticks around, and Team Canada would go on to score a deuce in the end. They go on top, 3-1. Fourth end, McCarvel with Hammer. Facing two around the edge of the forefoot, drawing for a single. We got it, they say, they got it. Do they have it? Just listen, do they have it? Yes, they do. Oh. Northern Ontario picks up the single, and they trail 3-2. Fifth end, Team Canada has a chance to answer with a big three. Anderson just needs the hit and stick, and that is money from the skip. And at the fifth end break, the hometown favorites need an answer. They trail 6-2. Sixth end, Northern Ontario needs multiple points. Third stones, Kendra Lilly. And this is terrific. A beauty freeze right down to the Team Canada Rock helped lead to a deuce. It's a 6-4 game. Eighth end, 7-4 now. Northern Ontario with hammer. McCarvel trying the double and score as many as four points. Makes the hit, comes across, but the Rock jams. They went to a measurement, and after the measure, it was two points for Northern Ontario. It's a 7-6 game. Ninth end, Anderson in Canada with Hammer facing one, thinking maybe the Rock top 12 foot is in the ring, so a chance to score two. They're electing to go with the hit and stick, Makes the hit and stick around, so now it comes down to whether it's one or two points. Check if the rock is in, and it is not. It was a gamble either way, because they could have gone for the blank as well. Canada gets one, they lead by two, coming home. Final end, third stones and more from Sweeting. Look at this, gets by the guard, Caps the Northern Ontario Rock back. And now, Team Canada has that one sitting buried. Helps closing up the scoring area. So now, let's move ahead to McCarvel with Hammer, trying to raise in a guard. Move the granite around and score multiple points. Northern Ontario, Krista McCarvel, right now, shot rock. This is going to take a lot of rattling here. Run it back, kick it sideways, no! And it'll be one, two, Three straight Canadian championships. Cannot do it. And the Anderson, Anderson ring wins a third straight Scotties. They're off to the World Women's Curling Championship. They take it 9 6, the final. Well, to be honest, uh, the last few years have been pretty dramatic. <laughs> so I was like, oh boy. I'm like, Carrie, just don't throw it through the house. Carrie, just don't flash. <laughs> This year, Scotties came to Northwestern Ontario and the city of Thunder Bay. It was supposed to be here last year, but of course, that changed. And sure, we could spend the next few minutes telling you how things still aren't quite right, but we're sure you're sick of hearing about that. We most certainly are. So instead, let's talk about how this year's Scotties seemed completely normal in so many wonderful ways. As it has ever since 1961, our National Women's Curling Championship brought our country together. It was a chance to reunite with people you hadn't seen in a while. A chance to represent your province or territory and wear your favorite color with pride. A chance to once again hang out with your best friends. Throughout the last 10 days, we were constantly reminded why we all love this game and even more so, the people who play it. The women of the Scotties are simply some of the nicest people you will ever meet anywhere. They handle themselves with class and grace, and they do it all while reminding us that there's much more to their lives than curling. Here on the Scotties ice, we saw what can happen when you learn from one of the very best. You see, Christina Black had never skipped at a Scotties before, but here this week, she led her Nova Scotia team to the final six. It pays to be a good student with a great teacher. Carrie Galusha had been to 14 Scotties before, but her 15th here in Thunder Bay became her very best. 
Her team from Yellow Knife won six games, the most they ever had, and they showed us what team spirit is all about. The number one ranked team in the world reminded us the meaning of perseverance. For most of the week, Team Flurry were forced to play without their skip, but they barely skipped a beat, going seven and three and finishing fourth. The most unlikely story was that of Andrea Crawford and her team from Fredericton. They arrived here as certainly one of the long shots, but said before it all began, they were here to win the whole thing. And guess what? They came pretty darn close, didn't they? New Brunswick found the podium for the first time in more than 30 years, proof that as long as you believe in yourself, anything is possible. The final set up as a script writer's dream, the two-time defending champions against the team that calls this city home. Krista McCarvel and her team from right here in Thunder Bay had walked into this very building a thousand times before. You see, this is where they spend countless hours perfecting their craft, doing it their way. And as the week went on, they finally got to feel like the home team and feel the love they so deserve. No, it may not have been the fairy tale ending it could have been, but for Team McCarvel, we do say a heartfelt thank you for being the amazing athletes that you are on the ice, and more importantly, the people you are off it. In the end, no one could stop that team in red. Carrie Anderson and the reigning Canadian champions were the best here all week. All four were named first team all-stars, and it was no surprise. They now have added themselves to a very short list of teams that have gone back to back to back. And isn't it great? that they will now head to Prince George as Team Canada, a place where they went two years ago only to have the world change before they could even start. This time, they will finally feel the love of being the home team, and we can't wait for that.